I watched that fish come. He followed at the cast before, and I was able to get it right back down there in front of him. Thankfully, he didn't go far. Man, that was so cool. I actually was able to talk that one into biting. You never really want to just pigeonhole a square bill as being something you have to have, you know, a hard target to throw it at. They're really good for just getting in shallow water, you know, if it's a lot of hard bottom or even areas that are soft bottom with just the occasional piece of cover or structure or something. They're great for just getting in those areas and combing it, you know, kind of the same type of places you'd pick up a lipless crankbait or a bladed jig and just a little bit thicker bill will do. Well, that fish knocked the fire out of it. So that was exactly what was going on right there. I was just in some of that grass, kind of popping it through there. And that fish triggered one of those pops. That was really cool. You see, I've just got some stringy, you know, just kind of scattered out stringy grass here. And I'm just holding my rod tip up high and not letting that bait get its max depth. I don't want to do that right here because then it will just bury up in that stuff. I'm trying to keep it up and just kind of work it, you know, through the top of that grass and drive it around any of it that I'm seeing that I need to. But Square bills are, you know, they're, they're the ultimate workhorse, in my opinion, as far as a crankbait goes. When you're fishing around a lot of cover, even heavy rock, you know, really, really snaggy, really hangy rock is a big deal. But when I think square bill, the first thing that comes to my mind is wood, because that square bill, the way it's designed, it just has the best deflection and able to come through a lot of that cover where you can burn that square bill through their trigger reaction bite because you're just able to fish the bait faster in those heavy cover areas. With the square bill on, on any crankbait um, and, and why that is so important and what it does, that, that actual, that lip being flat across the nose, when that hits a piece of cover, it, it makes the bait push more to one side or the other. Where a round bill bait's gonna kind of allow it to slide around it, that square bill's gonna push it hard one side or the other. And that is why fish like it so much, to be honest, in, in cover because it's gonna make that bait fish or whatever they think that it is, it just looks that much more in distress. Like there's something wrong with it, there's something going on, and that fish is gonna be, you know, gonna be more keen to eat a bait that uh, that looks like it's a little wounded or something weird is, is going on with it. The Rocco, you know, it is in my opinion, the best square bill crane bait ever made. Everything about the bait, the profile of it, it's not a flat bait, it's not a round build bait, it's a square bill bait. The base of this bait is still balsa wood. And that's what, you know, all the OG baits are. And that's, I love that in Rafla baits in general. I love the fact that we, we work with balsa because of the natural buoyancy that it has and just the way that that bait acts. You're gonna get that kind of action that you just can't get from a plastic bait. Picking colors with a crankbait is something that is really a, an ideal for me. I'm just gonna get on that body of water I'm gonna see what the general color of the water is right off that tree. I bumped one limb on that log right there and that fish hit it. But they're biting that green copper shad pretty well, but that's why you'll see a lot of times I've got one of these fish just barely hooked. And this color water, if I could pick anything, I'd be throwing green gizzard shad in here right now. But, you know, we've got a ton of colors in this lineup. And some of those, some of those new ones, one of them in particular, the brew citrus, is my absolute favorite. Gonna be a really staple for me in Rocco, but I can't emphasize enough how much I love those VMC hybrid trebles, man. They're just, they're a great wire diameter and uh, they just, man, they just pin them. They just really do. Springtime fishing for me and, and bait selection is so driven by the water temperature. I mean, that's something that I'm always looking at throughout the day even, as, you know, especially a nice day like today, today today's sunny. You know, we've got a decent little breeze. The water temperatures will warm up throughout the day. As that water hits that mid 50 degree range on up, that's when this is really gonna be something, you know, that I'm gonna have on the deck all the time. The big thing to think, or just to realize though, with the square bill crankbait, it's the bait that even in situations that water in the mid 40s, if those fish are in really heavy cover, this is what you gotta have. If, those, if the water's 75 or 80 degrees, and those fish are in really heavy cover, this is what you gotta have because it's a bait you can actually present to those fish and generate a reaction bite out of them. You know, there's a lot of different things you can fish down through here, but with Rocco, I'm able to, I'm able to move pretty quick. I'm able to cover water, you know, and bring this bait right down parallel to those, to that edge. We've got a good breeze blowing in here. These fish don't mind at all to run something down like that. It's a good reaction bite out of those fish. 
with any crankbait, but especially a square wheel, I never do this. Throw the bait out and reel the bait back to the boat. The straight reel. That that never happens for me with the crankbait. I'm always, I'll throw it out there, I'm gonna reel it down, give the rod a little twitch, give it a little twitch, I may speed up, may stop. I'm always doing different things with that bait throughout the cast. So it doesn't, you know, it's called a crankbait, yeah. Don't just straight reel that bait. Always do something different with it. Give it a little twitch, give it a little shake. Oh, that one choked it. Um, yeah, you want to you want to make sure you vary your retrieve is a is the best way to put it. Well, he got it choked. All right, get up here, buddy. Well, that fish has got it, got it just gone. Look at that. <laughs> That's, when you know color. That's when you know you've got a color that they are definitely biting. You're keyed in on the right kind of bait, and they are definitely eating it when they've got it like that. Tease that one into biting. He had actually hit at the cast before, and uh, then I saw him. I saw him shoot back down. He had bumped it. Then I got it right there close to him again. Just kind of talked him into biting. Boy, that's a heavy one there. That fish is good and fat. That's a lot of fun. That's really cool when you when you get a bite like that. Sometimes you'll just be covering water, you know, just fishing along, and you get a bite. Then you can pan that mega live over there. So oh yeah, right there he sits with the fish swam left or right from wherever they had actually bit your bait and make a better second cast to follow it up to it. Sometimes you gotta talk them into biting, but it definitely works that way. With Rocco and the way it's designed, I'm able to fish a lot of that heavier wood cover so I can fish it pretty quick. But I also can take the same rod, same bait, everything, and go right down, you know, kind of flat banks and just really cover a ton of water where there's less cover i can do that all with one bait that's the nice thing that i really like about this is it just for me as a tournament angler it's kind of a time saver it's something i can fish in almost any situation and be able to get bit with rocco it's really the bait that i can have you know on the deck of my boat almost 365 days of the year you know regardless of the situation and just how heavy the cover or lack of cover it's a bait that i can fish basically year round, regardless of where I'm at in the country.